So it's the middle of winter and you're ready to say it's time to go. I'm ready to retire and move to Arizona. So you hop on a flight, you go down to Arizona, you meet up with some old friends, maybe some friends from high school or college. You go out for three or four days of golfing. You go out to dinners. You're driving around some of these retirement communities and you're thinking, wow, I can't imagine how great my retirement would be if I lived like this. Nothing to do but get on the golf cart, drive around, go to dinner, try some of the great amenities in the community, the community pool, maybe the arts and crafts, maybe even go to one of the dances. It looks like you're up for a great future. But wait, before you go and buy in one of these 55 and up communities, there's a couple things I want to tell you about. It's not all Fantasy Island at the 55 and up communities. Hi, my name's Michael Smith. I'm a real estate agent in Scottsdale in the greater Phoenix area. Today, we're gonna to talk about some of the negatives about moving into a 55 plus community. It sounds great on paper. You're gonna be away from the kids and all the other things, but you're opening up yourself to a whole new world in the 55 and up communities. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is our friendly little pets. Number one on our list is pets. 55 plus communities have really strict HOAs in many cases. Not all, but in many. And in many areas, the HOAs rules and regulations cover pets and pets are a big deal. Pets are a bigger deal for neighbors because people walk around and, and they let their pet maybe use their yard for the restroom and other things. And when you're in a 55 and up community, there's a lot more neighbors around because many of them are no longer working and they're gonna have their nose in your business. And if your dog does their business in their yard, you're gonna know about it. So the one thing to keep in mind before you go sign the paperwork in a 55 and plus community is learn the pet policy. Get a copy of the HOA rules and regulations and look at the pet policy. Would you believe that there are certain communities that have restricted pet by the pets by the weight and actually call in the animals one time per year to weigh them? What would you do if you bought a home in a 55 and up community, but you couldn't stay there because of your pet? You think that's a joke, but it's not. Many HOAs can have very strict pet policies and a lot of fines can be put placed on you if you're not adhering to the rules. Number two, you're buying in a 55 and up community. Just remember that the only people that can buy for the most part are 55 and up. It doesn't seem like a big deal when, you need, when you're buying the home, but when you need to sell the home, maybe you need to sell it home quickly. Maybe for health reasons, you have to move back to another state, back to family and friends. You know, maybe you're only here part year and you need to sell the house. You know, 55 and up communities always have more inventory in general because so people go back home for the summer and they say, well, we're going to be going back to Arizona and then they don't end up coming back for one reason or another. And COVID really took this to the whole next level because a lot of people here, even from Canada, they weren't able to come down and see their home for the last year or so. So that's just one thing to keep in mind, because if there's less people that can buy your home when you need to sell, that means number one, a lower price because there's less demand. And number two is the time frame in which you can sell. If you're trying to sell your home in Arizona in one of the 55 plus communities that's primarily snowbirds, meaning they're winter visitors only, you're not gonna have a good buyer pool and more than likely your prices are gonna come down, especially if you need a fast sale. So keep that in mind when you're looking to buy in a 55 and up community. The next thing we're going to talk about, number three, is uh, your guests. You know, in a lot of these communities, people have friends and family. They move to Arizona. They're excited. They want people to come down. They got a great community swimming pool. They got a lot of great things going on in the community. And they find out that their guests can only stay for a short period of time. Or maybe their guests can't even use some of the community things at all. Or maybe they bring down their grandchildren 
when they're not there and they're they're hoping that their grandchildren are going to have full use of the facilities and then they find out that their grandchildren can't even use the swimming pool or maybe they can't use the swimming pool during certain hours or maybe they they need supervisors or supervision at the swimming pool if the children are going to be there just keep in mind you're moving to a 55 and up community because you want peace of mind and maybe you want to stay away from people with children I mean, that's just something that happens. You know, people don't want to necessarily be around people that aren't their age in the community. And that's something that you're going to have in a 55 and up community. So just keep that in mind. There's going to be restrictions on friends and family. There's just no, no way around it. The next thing is these HOAs have more restrictions than a lot of common HOAs in regular single family home dwellings. You know, in a single family home dwelling, they're going to have rules and regulations about the general things, but they're not going to have real specifics on your yard. I purchased in a 55 and up community. And after I purchased the home, they served me with a letter stating that I had to remove a cactus that was in my front yard. I told them that I didn't plant the cactus. It's been there as long as I know. I don't know anything about it. And I was able luckily to go back and produce photos and, and show them that I didn't put it in. But those are things that you're gonna have that are gonna happen. And you know what happens is, let's just say you were living in a 55 and up home, your neighbor didn't like something about your yard, you've been arguing over it for years, and then you move. Now the new resident coming in, you're all excited, you move in, and all of a sudden the neighbor reports you on that cactus. You bought the home with the cactus, just like I did. You didn't know anything about it. And now you got a neighbor mad at you right off the bat. And it's interesting because my neighbor seemed really friendly, but when I was out in the yard, she came up to me and mentioned how she'd really love to have that cactus removed. I told her I didn't have any plans on removing it. I love the fact that I had a cactus in my yard. It's something that, you know, if you live in Chicago, you don't get. So just be aware of that. Um, number five on my list, vehicle restrictions. Remember that when you're in an HOA, especially a strong HOA, every little thing is gonna matter. And everything you do is gonna be noticed by all the neighbors because a lot of them are retired and they're around all the time. And some of them don't like certain things and they have an attitude about it and there's nothing you're gonna do about it. So vehicle restrictions can be a big one. Let's say your HOA doesn't allow overnight parking on the street, or maybe they don't even allow overnight parking in your driveway. And you have a two car garage, but you have a lot of stuff to store and you don't have room to put the car in. Now, what are you gonna do? Let's say you have a lot of stuff to store and you can't fit it in your garage with the car in there. And now you're gonna have to go pay, you know, 200 plus dollars a month for a storage unit. It's very common for people to move to Arizona when they're coming from a state where they had basements and they had plenty of storage room for all their extra stuff and they come here, they have a two car garage, but they can't put anything in the garage because they wanna store all their stuff in there. It's very common for people to come down here with a lot of extra stuff that eventually they're gonna probably get rid of, but in the meantime, they're gonna to have to rent storage. The last thing on the vehicles, let's say you're still working, but you're living in a 55 and up community and you have a commercial vehicle with a business name on it. Maybe it's a pickup truck with your company name on it. Many HOAs won't allow you to park your vehicle at your home. Or maybe you have an RV or something that you need to store that's large. Now what's great is some of the communities that are 55 and up in certain areas do have extra storage available on site where you could put an RV or, you know, if you had to, maybe you had to you'd park your pickup truck there. Bottom line is it's just very important to go over the rules and regulations before you sign the paperwork in a 55 and up community. Due to the strength of the HOA and the, the, the numerous rules that apply, you need to know what you're getting into before you move in. And remember, not that people aren't friendly in the 55 and up communities, but there's a lot of nosy neighbors and a lot of neighbors are gonna report you if you do something wrong. And then it's funny, but the HOAs are always quick to reply 
when there's a violation of the rules and regulations, but oftentimes it's hard to get a hold of them when you just have some general questions. So just think about that. We're doing a couple videos on 55 plus living. Check out our other videos on our channel. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button to help us grow so more people can find us on YouTube since that's how this, this works. And watch some of our other videos, share them with your friends. And we're here to help you if you need help with real estate. If you're out of state and you need us to go and look at a property for you, do a walkthrough video and share information with you about it and our opinion, we're glad to do it. All our information is down below in the details section of this video. So once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.